All right, class, so these little videos that I'm gonna start making for this class, um, it's basically just another place for you to get information, for you to sort of hear the way that I think about solving these problems and writing out mechanisms, and also to show, sort of show you best practices, things that I think that you guys should be doing as we're going through um, this class. So here is the, um, you know, the, the review problem that I gave you at the beginning of class on Thursday, and I just wanted to talk through these different mechanisms um, and make sure that you're understanding, you know, the, the reasoning behind why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. So the first thing um, that I'm going to look at here is I'm going to look at this reaction, and I'm asked to provide a reaction mechanism. And in my mind, the first thing I'm going to really be thinking about is, well, what's really going on here? Like, what, what happens in this reaction? And I can see that clearly this is what we would call a dehydration reaction. Um, you know, I've got alkene products, I've, I've lost water, that's going to be what, what, what I've lost here, OH, um, and one of the hydrogens here to form the double bond. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, dehydration, I've got I've to eliminate water. If I see H2SO4, that's a strong acid, we should immediately be thinking H+. That's a, that's a source of H+. Really what's going to be doing the, the business here is this H+. And this little triangle that just indicates heat. We're going to be applying some heat. So the first step, if I see H+, and I see this OH group, the first step is always going to be something like this. I'm always going to be protonating that alcohol, and I'm going to form... this protonated alcohol, right? That's gonna be the thing that happens first. Um, we should be drawing that sort of immediately at this point in time, I would say. Now the next step, um, there's a number of ways to sort of show this. Essentially what we're gonna end up with is this carbocation. And there are really two ways to show this. The first way would be just to show elimination of this water molecule. We're just gonna eliminate that water molecule. That's going to give us a carbocation at this position here, the one position. Um, and then we're going to get a hydride shift to get to this carbocation. So this primary carbocation, that's not something that really exists, right? We're not, we're not ever going to observe that in solution. So what I would sort of prefer to do is show that hydride shift. So that arrow is supposed to be going directly to that carbon, so shifting that hydrogen over there with these electrons over here. Um, to end up with, let's just put those hydrogens in there for clarity, um, to end up with this carbocation. Um, from here, then it's pretty straightforward to eliminate to get to our, our desired products. Um, if I want to form this internal alkene, I'm going to take my water molecule and deprotonate here. These electrons are going to move into this double bond to form our first product. And then for my second product, I'm just gonna take one of those protons to form this, this secondary product here. Um, I do wanna point out this will be our major product. And the reason for this being the major product is simply that we've got an internal double bond and internal alkene versus the terminal alkene. Um, for the next reaction mechanism, here we've got two very different looking products. Um, I would say this is a substitution product, right? And then this is going to be an elimination product. The other thing, so, you know, again, right away I'm thinking to myself something about SN1, SN2, and I'm thinking E1 or E2. Since I'm seeing the sodium methoxide, Right away, again, I'm going to say, well, what, what does this represent? What does this mean? You know, what's going to be doing this chemistry when I'm looking at that? I'm going to think to myself, OCH3 minus. That methoxide ion, that's what's going to be driving this reaction. If I see OCH3 minus, that is to me saying, well, this is probably going to be SN2 or E2, right? I've got um, a strong nucleophile here. That's gonna be, be doing some attacking. That's gonna be abstracting some protons. Um, so right away, SN2, E2. So if I wanted to draw out these reaction mechanisms, so I'm gonna start with the SN2 reaction mechanism. 
to form this substitution product. And just a simple one-step reaction mechanism where this methoxide attacks this carbon um, and then the bromine is kicked off as a leaving group. That gives me my first product. For my second alkene product, this is going to be an E2 reaction mechanism. So what I want you guys to, to make sure you're thinking about is the stereochemistry involved with an E2 reaction. So here's my E2. So let's say this bromine is coming out. We'll put that hydrogen back there. And then we'll do a hydrogen here. And then another hydrogen here. So just for clarity. So if I'm going to be doing an E2, this methoxide needs to abstract that proton. It's not going to abstract this proton. These electrons are going to drop down and those electrons are going to leave with the bromine as a leaving group. So that's going to lead me to my second product here of my E2 um, mechanism, and that's my second product that I'm showing here as well. Um, all right, hopefully that helps.